The transfer portal giveth, and the transfer portal giveth another time, and the transfer that. portal just keeps giving. Uh, ho, 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 dog fans. It's Christmas time, and um, Kirby Smart is out here just handing out presents to everyone. We'll talk about it on the Locked on Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. He is Daniel. I am Clint. Thanks for making us your first listen on your podcasting platform of choice. If you're on YouTube, thanks for joining us there. Get over the audio side, download the YouTube. If you're on the audio side, go over the YouTube, do the same thing there. Get to see our smile and mug faces. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, just like that. Wow. That was so forced. Can't wait it's- to see the screen grab the Dukes makes on that and just... He is he is in some pain. He's still recovering from some surgery, and so maybe he's forgotten about it. No, um, the medicine is not made in that loopy. Recovering yeah. from surgery means he's just scrolling. Like he, he has more doing. time. More time. Um, hey, we are talking. We have lots of news to cover since we've been with you last week. This is your team every single day. This is Georgia Bulldogs. We are four fans by fans. If that is alarming to you, then I apologize. Get off my channel because mm-hmm. that's what we are. And there's a lot of folk who like that. So keep on liking it because we enjoy great. being fans. Daniel, you mentioned it. The transfer portal is open. Uh, we're going to probably do a little preview later on in the week to the game against mm-hmm. the Florida yeah. State. Junior some of them, some of them, not many of them. We'll talk about it. We'll have episodes Thursday, Friday. Mm-hmm. We will talk about the game against Florida State, obviously, um, that's happening early next week. But yeah, it's not, there's not a lot going no. on down in Tallahassee. They have no. far more opt outs and transfers than Georgia. Well, has. they have to pay. It was a business decision to keep the lawyers on retainer. To- well, Nilsson, you spend your money somewhere. So um, but let's quick, talk about this transfer portal news, Clint. Georgia got a couple new guys. Yes, I was just going to say, before we get in that transfer, just a quick shout out. Georgia basketball team, winners of a few in a row. Got a few more coming. Listen, once SEC we get, play. we're getting into SEC play. We got one more before SEC play. Going to get to that 10th win. Um, uh, this team, I am very fascinated by this first little stretch of, of conference this games. Is- this is going to be it's a tell. really fun team to watch, Clint. Um, really okay, Transfer Portal team. news. Uh, yeah. Transfer Portal has been somebody that has taken a few players. Kentucky is now Georgia North. Mm-hmm. Uh, JDJ as well as the exportation of points elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kroger Field, turns out, does not have, have any port. Um, no, the it's a lines. landlocked so, situation. Good luck on import, export there. Yeah. Uh, Brock Vandalay, Vandalay Industries, Vandegrift. But we get news that the portal has opened the other way. And not only did we get a wide receiver from Vanderbilt, but we got mm-hmm. two new in the fold. Colby Young coming mm-hmm. on over from Miami, as well as ETN from Florida. The great state of Florida is giving to the dogs continually. Love that. We love that to see that. Uh, Daniel, let's start with ETN because um, um, I, let's – Let's not bury the lead. Let's Mm -hmm. we've stated this before. Running back was not a need. We are stacked. We're fine. However, however, now we're better. Now we were fine. uh Now we're better than fine. When you add a talent like ETN, Mm -hmm. it automatically transforms your entire running back room. Yeah. Overnight. Four star, four star kid, seven hundred fifty yards last year, eight touchdowns last year, averaging five point up five point nine yards per carry for his career um, down in Gainesville. Um, he's the acceleration is the first thing that you notice with this with this kid. It's right. the burst through the hole. It's that he you watch him on these runs. He's an inside. He's an inside runner. He's an outside runner. He could run through every gap. He can run every scheme, you know, he, he can run counter ISO toss yeah. Yeah. like into the boundary. He he's, he could do it all. He, that was a, 
Disgusting but, throwback. But there's a but there's an acceleration to him, a burst to him. He yes. he hits another gear in his running. That is the first thing you notice. Um, I actually think he's got a a bit of a hidden trait the more that you watch him, and that is his his physicality and his toughness in his runs. Uh, he's a powerful runner, Clint. He f- yes. he's a finisher on these runs, um, and and you see it. in he he welcomes contact. Yeah, he runs through contact. Yeah, and he runs over contact at yeah, the end. Don't don't mistake when Daniel says burst and acceleration. Don't mistake that for what we used to call scat back. We used to call satellite players. Don't mistake that because this dude. Is a it, he's a running back from the south? Like just, just hear that, know that, understand that he he played in the SEC and he's your running back. You can't be that type of running back without having to go in between the tackles, bury your head in, and get over five yards per carry. This is uh, people will liken him. This is the first name that pops your head is DeAndre Swift when you see ETN, and I don't hate that, although it's not dead on. Because if you look at it more, there's a little more physicality. Swift is a physical runner. I'm not denying. He, he doesn't shy from contact. But I think actually Etienne has a bit more of that Zamir White in him. He's 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 got a little bit of that. Take a flavor of Zeus. Add it to DeAndre. He's in there. But this is a skill. This is a position in which automatically brings complete and utter, in my mind, Daniel, utter solidification to the running back room last year we didn't know it at the time all the injuries that hit us leading up to the season we were very very scarce in the backfield yeah this year we ain't scarce in the backfield oh we're, lord we're, no we we don't have three four year starters in the mm-hmm. backfield i understand that but we are stacked top top to bottom yeah with talented dudes that could rotate through freshmen that are coming in that are going to be abject monsters in the backfield this is a massive get we had been hearing this for a couple of weeks now mm-hmm. finally becomes official and uh this this catapults our offense gets us such a leg up already in the off season yeah yeah it's it's big for the offense um more to say on this and then talk about colby young as well right after this but first want to let you know about ebay motors ebay motors is the right part the right fit the right price ebaymotors.com ebay guarantee fit only available to u.s customers if you're in the u.s here's what you do you just peruse on over to ebaymotors.com That's right. you find everything you need to make your gas guzzling machine a, a little bit less gas guzzling you find things that help with the appearance that help with cleaning it that help with maintenance if you're trying to find that hard to find bulb because you have some sort of 86 bronco that you just don't want to go down and have to ask the guy down at the pick and pull one more time for you don't have to ebaymotors.com the right part the right fit the right price ebay guaranteed is only for you as customers put your make model year into my garage that way every single time you go walking through the ebay motors aisles and you put something in the cart online, it will tell you, yes, this is signed, sealed, delivered, will in fact fit. If it doesn't, they're going to replace it. They're going to take care of you. They, they're awesome. They're fantastic. eBayMotors.com, the right part, the right fit, the right price every single time. Now, when you when you say it, it's huge for the backfield, it's, you know, it solidifies, it's a leg up for Georgia. I want to be, I want to be careful and cautious here. This is a big get for Georgia. Um, it's a great player. Um, I don't necessarily know that I'm sitting here right now saying to myself, Trevor Etienne is the number one back on Georgia's I, team next no, year. I'm not and saying so that. Let's let's just keep that in mind. I do think Branson's Branson's injury recovery has a lot to do with that conversation about who the guy is in Athens. Um, And I think the biggest part of this is ETN offers not only depth, but it's early season Branson insurance. That's thank you. Because if he's not able to go and all of a sudden you were going to be relying on Roderick Robinson and Andrew Paul and, 
you know, obviously losing two very experienced backs out of the backfield this year, it, that was not going to be a great situation for Georgia. ETN offers you somebody that's very stable early on. And then the three freshmen running backs coming in, as well as Paul and Robinson, who really played very sparingly and are going to have a lot of opportunities to grow. It gives them time to be able to see which one is really elevating themselves into a place to be able to play yep. with ETN and with Branson, assuming that he's able to get back to 100% this year. And that's what I just, I, I can't stand that we do as fans, that we start slotting a depth chart in. And we think to ourselves, this depth chart is an in stone, chiseled away, can't be moved. Can't be. That's not how Kirby Smart and staff think about depth chart and things about players playing. It's a long season. There's right. lots of development needed. It's a lot of talent on this team. Think of it more. This is why we joke every single time. Yes, there might be a running back that comes onto the field for the very first play of the offensive series, but that is not the, quote, starter. I know he is starting the game, but that doesn't mean he's going to finish with the most touches and the most yeah. plays and the most snaps. You when name starters has- at quarterback and left tackle. Sure. You, you don't name starters at, you know, at running back or, or, or defensive tackle. No. You know, like no, these no, are not positions you, yeah. That's exactly what it does, because if you were telling me that I was going into the season with the the three, three three-headed monster and Branson leading the charge, coming off of injury, coming off surgery, and I was, he had to hit. Like, I couldn't go in with two because this doesn't, we did that. We did that last year. It didn't go well. You By the way, Georgia opens the season against Clemson this year. Like, there's no, it's not 2023 anymore. There's no just six-game warm-up to get into the season no like not having branson week one which we're not saying that's what's going to be but that's a very real possibility that's right this this makes a huge impact my my last thing on on etn is um it you know you mentioned the deandre swift comp i think that is the best comp he's not the player that deandre swift was but 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 he does have a similar running style I, I agree with you. Maybe a bit more physicality. I think the thing that that really jumps off the page or the the screen when you watch um, ETN is the is the missed tackles, the forced missed tackles. He yes. he runs. I mentioned finishing at the end of runs, but he runs through contact, through arm tackles. If you bring your shoulder and think that you're going to bring this guy to the ground. You just got another thing uh, coming to you. If you dive at the legs, he's got a, he's got great balance. He's got great feet. He's able to run through those. You see, you saw it time and time again at Florida. He's able to run through those ankle tackles. Guys diving on the ground. Um, he's able to keep his feet and get another six, seven, twelve, fourteen yards on a play um after first contact go look at his yards after contact numbers i don't have them in front of me but they i i I looked at them the other day and and they are absolutely fantastic that's really where he stands out um you can run him as i said in any in any formation any scheme but um what he's going to give you is the ability to burst through a hole and the ability to uh run through contact and essentially create a hole where there wasn't one previous That's exactly right. And the acceleration piece, think of it as once he gets into the second level, that's really where the acceleration takes off because to get there, you do have to break through those tackles. You got to get through the first initial wave of defenders. And then when you're on the open field, man, my goodness, watch out. He can finish it there as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, He did not have a lot of success in the Florida comparatively to a lot because of the Florida offense was just so abysmal last year. I mean, led the team in touchdowns with eight. Eight. That's like eight to eight touchdowns is not not barn burning. He was the best weapon they had. And and he's Um, off of the rat infested smoldering heap this is you just you love it for this young man i love because he has moved he's changed his address from gainesville florida to athens georgia and that is all a person can ask for in life that's called an upgrade it is it is it is i met somebody the other day that told me they did uh, work for a year and a half in gainesville and i said just the year and a half and he said 
yes, just the year and a half. I said, I hear he you. He said, that's that's a half a lifetime in Gainesville years. Like, that's not a – comes at you fast. Um, all right. We got Colby, Colby Young. Um, we'll get into him more in the third segment. But um, big, tall, 6'5", wide receiver – um initial thoughts on here's Colby here's Young. my initial thoughts and here's what i think is it's it's wild to me especially at georgia i want you to understand this i'm gonna third segment is gonna be all about him as a player but i want to talk yeah. about a big bodied downfield 50 50 ball guy coming to miami and all of a sudden we're looking at this offense and we're looking why can't kirby get five star wide receivers to come to georgia okay first of all we have Mm -hmm. George Pickens, literally a couple of years ago. Not very good. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I understand. Uh -huh. It's so hard. No, it's hard to convince a young man to come in, and as Kirby has said, to stop caring who gets credit, to work hard, and get into the system. Here's mm -hmm. the problem with five star wide receivers they want the ball all the time and they don't want to block. That's the problem. Yeah. And this is not a talent. This is this is just, well, I want numbers. I want I want the Heisman. I want to go do go right. Okay. Kirby says, yeah, we we will do that. Look again, a la George Pickens. That is in the arsenal. But also in the arsenal, you must block on the edge for 20 yards downfield. Mm -hmm. You must be engaged. You must do the slip screens. You must come down and and, and do the combo block, letting the tackle go up into the second <laughs> level after you chip off of a defensive end. All that's true. So if you're sitting here going, oh, man, there's a problem. We can't get these high school kids to come. No, look at the college kids that understand if I go to Georgia, I will still be drafted because guess what? Game tape is not just my ability to run the 40. It is also do oh, I do the things that are hardworking day in, day out in order to do. And those kids excel at Georgia. Catch the ball. Our offense is there. It is robust. It is a complex offense that we ask our receivers not to just simply do one of three passing route trees and move on into a concept. Uh, that is why a guy like Colby Young is actually, actually an impact get from day one i anticipate this guy being in with the rotation again hear me rotation of starters I mean, this is a in like you want to talk about a rotation this wide receiver this wide receiver room clint there's we, there's 200 of them it like this is the most talented group of wide receivers mm -hmm. we have had at athens yet group not ceiling not individual group and, and that's losing lad assuming that you're losing lad lad's gone and mm -hmm. and this is of just those and here who, we are and here we are guys it is incredible we're gonna come back third second talk about specifically why i'm so excited about colby young coming in from ma but first this all right colby yeah. young six five uh 215 Originally out of New York, played two seasons at Miami. Um, we're going to get into the football stuff in a second. But that's my first favorite thing about Colby Young is he's 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 old. I mean, he's not old. He's a junior. But he's got two oh, that's full old. seasons of college football experience under his belt. He's a veteran guy. He's been... You know, you know, he's played in in every game of his college career. Two two years at Miami, um, last year forty seven catches, five hundred and sixty three yards, and yep. five touchdowns. Um, had three hundred plus yards as a true freshman at Miami. Uh, <clears throat> he's got he's got big playability. He's got explosive playability, averaging you know twelve yards a catch last year. But I think it's the it's the contested balls, it's the outside receiver, and you know we just start with lead with I guess Georgia goes out and gets um, wide receiver from Vandy, mm -hmm. London Humphrey. They bring in Colby Young, um, and and in doing so, they put two receivers on the roster, both with major college football experience at a who have a body type that Georgia had zero wide receivers on the roster previous. Correct. Like 
it's you might think Georgia's got Georgia's ultra talented wide receiver. Georgia's got so many wide receivers. Why were they going into the portal to get wide receivers? Why wouldn't they go into the portal and get a defensive lineman? Hold that thought. Well, and they did that. <laughs> they did that. We just we can only cover so much in an episode. More on that. Um, but they go out and get wide receivers like this because they don't have guys like this. Because Rob Thomas is not this guy because Dom Lovett is not this guy because, um, you know, even some of the young guys that you expect to, to play and contribute next year, Anthony Evans, he's not this guy. No, Like there's Georgia's got a lot of talented receivers, even, um, you know, like even Dylan Bell is like all these guys can play on the outside. Yes, but they're not six, five two fifteen. Georgia brings in two guys with size, with you know, with long arms, with uh, ability to go up and make contested catches, it's a it's a huge weapon, especially given the fact that you're losing your biggest, most physical wide receiver in Brock Bowers. Yes, that's see. This is what's very interesting. If you look at these body types, yes, I understand Oscar Delp. He is not Brock Bowers. If you hope that no, he, he will be, not. great, cool, good on you. I know that he can't be because that's the best tight end to ever play college football that is leaving Athens right now. Okay. Right. We need big body guys that can make mismatches that we can motion in, move around. Dylan Bell is a weapon everywhere. Speedy guys are all over the field. However, guys that can just come down with a pass, come down with a haul, pinpoint that that more consistent Rosemey type position player uh, as well as 50 50 contested balls in which we didn't have a lot Carson Beck tried to do that a couple times last year didn't exactly succeed unless it was Brock Bowers and then it was very successful because he is again the best tight end didn't do that a lot because you don't do that to Lad McConkey like that's not the that's not his skill set that's not what he does well, now we have that. We got two of those guys. I think they are a rotation at position number one, as well as a couple other dudes out there. Uh, and then two and three with the slot, with Ra Ra, with Dom Lovett, with Dylan Bell. All of a sudden, we have ourselves a very, very experienced, very smart, very savvy pass catching threats everywhere on the field, Daniel. That, yeah. The, the age stands out, the size stands out, the ability that that they have to get production and not care about how it's made is very, very important to me as well. So I think instantaneously the floor of this wide receiver room is just elevated sky high. The ceiling is yet to be determined. Oscar Delp, how he develops, as well as I think Dylan Bell continues to develop into the weapon that he is. And then who knows with all the other speedsters, the young guys we haven't seen. Yeah, yet. I mean, there's so many young guys that some of those guys are going to pop. They're, they're going to hit. Um, they're going to elevate themselves, and they're going to they're going to pass some folks on this depth chart, and yeah. you're going to see them sooner rather than later. We've heard uh, about CJ just being blazing in the wide receiver. Yeah, Super and saw it early last year. We did, and so you know those those types of guys haven't even been mentioned, but to get experienced guys who have this skill set, this body type on campus. Um, last thing that stands out to me about Colby Young, you look at you look at his season last year at Miami. Every single game of the season, he had multiple catches for the Miami Hurricanes. Not a single game last year was he held without a catch, and not a single game last year was he held to just one catch. Multiple catches in every single game, that – like that tells you something about a wide receiver. It's one thing if you have a day when you have six catches for 95 yards and you just have a big day or or you break one 80 yards and so yes, your you know, your total yards goes up. Yes, your you know, your yards per catch goes up. But when you look through game by game in the breakdown and you see what he was able to do Every single week, multiple catches, three, four, five, six, seven catches per week, week right. in and week out. That to me says a lot more than a guy who, you know, who had a, you know, a, a big, a big number of yards receiving, but it was sporadic. It was off and on. 
Give me again. I, I, I hate to keep saying this, but give me the floor raising up for the Georgia wide receiver room. And this, a guy who consistently is playing, consistently getting receptions and consistently contributing is what we need in this offense. Carson Beck's coming back. He's going to be distributing the football around quite a bit. We're, the more times, the more lotto tickets, the more numbers of catches, the more opportunities for receptions, the more successful and sustained drives can be. That's what you need. And you're exactly right. I mean, these are not guys that are going to go ahead and, and do end arounds for 80 yards and then take the next, you know, whole three quarters off. That's not who these guys are. These are yeah. working every down, every distance, does not have to be only matchup dependent only play call dependent can go ahead and get their bag no matter where they are on the field no matter what is play mm -hmm. called and and again this is this is right up the alley of Kirby Smart needing the type of player that he wants and it's here that they, they are here and they are yet to still be incoming um again Xavier McLeod will we'll get to that uh in a further episode oh but, there's more there's more well, there's more coming you I thought I thought. See, the Daniel. song, people get a little confused. The 12 Days of Christmas song, Clint, it's not actually counting down to Christmas. There's actually 12 days of Christmas. There's a, so it's, there's, it's not the 12 days season. before Christmas. No, it's a season It's a season of oh, celebration, the traditional Christmas celebration. And so um, it's, a lot, it's a lot like that when it comes to Kirby Smart and recruiting. You think, oh, this is great. This was a fantastic gift that I just received. But what if what if I was to tell you there's a lot more? There's just there's a lot more. Last time Georgia got a wide receiver transfer from Miami, his name was Lawrence Cager. And um, if we could even get a fraction of Lawrence Cager out of Colby Young, let me just let me just tell you. Also, you mentioned the success of Miami, and you mentioned Carson Beck, and it and it it's just it's worth stating. It's he had that success at Miami with Tyler Van Dyke. Oh no, quarterback. Oh no. A lot of times they didn't even have a quarterback back there at Miami, and he still had multiple catches every single week. So, if if you could do that with him, what can you do with Carson Beck? It just it's worth watching. Y'all, this is going to be a wild week leading up to the bowl game that we got. We will give you previews. We'll give you insight. As portal news hits, we'll give it to you. Uh, as more unsigned guys out there who are recruits, I dare call them free agents, but let's just... For Georgia players who haven't yet made their intentions known for what they're going to do next year. There's a lot left on the mysterious question. A lot of meat on the bone. <laughs> This, he is Daniel. I am Clint. This is Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.